there's no, no, no speed. speed control. It's either mm -hmm. full speed or lopsided. such a force that it pushed the moon out and it came out of the Pacific Ocean because we know the moon fits perfectly into the Pacific Ocean basin. Wow, this is fascinating. Well, we can't find Theus anywhere on the Earth or on the moon. So was Steiner right that the moon is separated from the Earth by spiritual beings? And as you may or may not know, he said earlier, the sun, moon, earth, and planets were all one mass, nebula. And at some point, the higher beings, called Elohim or Zeusii, said, we can't exist with all of you slower beings. We're taking the rarefied substances, and I'll put quotes around the word substances, and we're going to go fall down the sun. And so six Elohim go, but one stays. One sacrifices his own development, and that being is known as Yahweh, or Jehovah, stays with the earth-moon combination, and then later finds that the earth and human development is being impeded so he pulls the moon out and places it in an orbit so that we have these eclipses. It's not for naught that the moon is the size that it is and that it fits perfectly to occult the sun. You thought that last statement on your page there? Yes. The homeopathy one? Yes, but there are now many of these presentations and rocks are now uncounted for. Yes, isn't that fascinating? We don't know what's happened in as much as 30% of these rocks. We started giving them away to be displayed in various state museums, sta you know, the various states got them and different countries, and then they disappeared. You know, who knows where they've gone? <coughs> Did somebody say, well, the exhibit's over, pull it out. Who, who knows, this is just a rock. So has it been thrown into a landfill? Or did somebody say, I think there's value in this, I'm stealing this rock, and I'm gonna sell it on eBay, or, you know, or maybe there, somebody thought there was some homeopathic medicinal value. And they're using it to build certain spiritual strengths out of these moon rocks, but yeah, they disappeared. Most likely by the evil people. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe people who want to control the future. Exactly. I don't think it was biodynamic farmers. That's no. Mm -hmm. yeah, do that. I'm sorry? I would, I would be very impressed with what grows in the field of people. Alright, well, it would be interesting to find out, but I don't think we'll have an opportunity to do that experiment. But but watch what happens. I'm going to the return of the moon. What left will return. We talk about a big bang in astrophysics, and we say so many billions of years in the future, the law collapse again. Same thing in the solar system. Everything will start collapsing, and then we'll have this massive supernova, and then we'll get heavier metals in the next one as astrophysicists would say. But they say the moon will return, but it's way, way out there. It's kind of system. It's not way, way out there. And we'll talk about that. So back to this diagram, we talked about this metallicity last night and, and how it's used to describe each one of these ending in a supernova. These are the etheric, exactly the etheric, the esoteric names Old Saturn, Sun, Moon, and Earth, and Earth is divided into 
first a Mars period and then a Mercury period. So you can see Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Next would be Thursday, which is Jupiter. Right? And then we go Friday, and then Saturday. But oh, we already had Saturday. So guess what? Esoterically, there's another name. So back here, we had a separation of two entities. And so we recapitulate that when the sun separates. So we have recapitulation. Anybody here who has a Waldorf teacher? You know, we, we, in Waldorf education, we have the child recapitulate history. We have this saying, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. In, in spiritual science, we have in each one of these a recapitulation of everything that happened before. And so with the sun and moon separating, we have that happening here as well. And then later, the moon separates from the earth. These epochs we've been talking about, which are the much larger ones, uh, the Polarian, Hyperborean, then Lemurian, then Atlantis, and this is the period we're in now, and there's seven of these post-Atlantean cultural epochs, and at the end will be something called the war of all against all, when human egoism overwhelms everything, and it will use the technology that we've developed to bring about this war of all against all. So it begs a horrible question. And I'll tell you just, when I graduated from college, and I was out interviewing, I told every company that I interviewed, I will not work in any direct way for military purposes. I don't want anything that I'm de designing, developing, to be used to kill people. Now, I can't say that everything I worked on, it never happened, but I was able to do that. But now I'm asking myself the question, wow, in a very indirect way, everything that we're developing in a technological sense is bringing about this war of all against all. <coughs> and the question is, can we, you know, it doesn't look like we have that much farther to go, but it's actually, it's about 5,000 years or a little more. Um, no, about 9,000 years, sorry. Um, that, uh, you know, will that war occur sooner or too late? It has to occur at the right time. Not too soon and not too late. Can it be prevented? Can it? No. In fact, it would be wrong. Interesting, interestingly, it would be wrong to try to prevent it. I'm, I'm not going to quite answer that now, but through tonight, I hope it comes answered. But it sounds horrible, but just as we had to have Atlantis come to an end, and just as we had to have Lemuria come to an end, the spiritual world takes these things and turns them into something good. So in our times, if you're a Christian person, you realize that what Judas did was a very important thing, that Christ had to die. If he didn't go through death, we wouldn't have Easter, we would not have Christianity. He had to die. It's a and hard we, fact. And we do, too. And we all have to die, but we, yeah. in Christo Lorimer is but the Rosicrucian saying that we die in Christ. Mm -hmm. So here is this great historical parabola. And I put the Yana space of looking to the past and to the future to help us understand this. The things that occur here and here and here have their resolution here. So we kind of undo what we did going in. And so they recapitulate in a reverse order on the way out, so to speak. And so I showed this picture last night. We went through an age in which we experienced spiritual beings intimately, and that got more and more remote from us until we didn't experience them at all. 
except very few people in the ancient mysteries were able to retain that that would develop back on this time frame. <clears throat> and Moses was in this period of time, uh, Abraham back here, and we have the incarnation of Lucifer back in this time, and so to balance that, we will have this incarnation of Aramon. And I also pointed out this last time that the Eastern path was this focused preparation for, for the coming of Lucifer, and it's very much a path that deals with um, this overcoming of that knowledge. It's very much a path that is concerned with truth and finding that inner truth. In this path, which I'm calling the Western path, it's a different fate. It's a fate to deal with Araman. And you'll see later that Araman's incarnation is expected in America. Imminently. Big surprise for some of you, I'm sure. And so, for the rest of human evolution during the Pacas, the post Atlantean cultural ages, we will be dealing, in a sense, with our mind, most intensely in the next 300 years. So, our mind is preparing human beings and bodies just as we all prepare our bodies when we're incarnating, he's preparing a body that can handle him. So we can look at all of this development of the merging of man and machines in that way, and we can go, yuck. But remember, as we heard last night, it's through Arma that we will be able to take this path that there are gifts beneficial for humanity. So we can't look at this in this one-sided way of yuck. But we have to be aware of what's going on. We have to see Aramon in everything that's coming towards us. So there, it's fascinating, in Atlantean time, it was the survivors of the fifth epoch that were the ones that carried, or I should say the fifth cultural age, that carried forward into our times. The sixth and the seventh passed away. So most people would think it would be the people of the seventh, right? That's the end. And for our post-Atlantean age, it's going to be the Russian period. It will be the survivors of the war of all against all that will carry cultural evolution on to the sixth epoch. And that sixth epoch, he calls it, I still haven't quite grasped this, a descended astral world. There'll be nothing like the world we know of. So this is still Earth evolution. We're not talking about Jupiter yet. But the sixth epoch, about 9,000 years from now, will be a descended astral world, and that is beginning now. And then after that, we will have a descended Devakon, or a heavenly world, in the last of the epochs, where it will be impossible to hide your moral motivations for things. So this little time wheel, clock here, shows the last of Lemuria, then the seven epochs, uh, or cultural ages, sorry, I, there I'm, I make the mistake all the time too, the seven cultural ages of Atlantis. And now we're going to enter the post-Atlantean period. And you can see the fifth one lines up over the last Lemurian. And he says, when we get to these future ages, women will be coming increasingly infertile. And it's already begun. And we see it in all the help we're trying to give women with in, in vitro fertilization, 
I don't know if you know about three parent babies that are being done. Mm -hmm. And 